You are looking live inside the Christenberry Fieldhouse on a Saturday afternoon as it is time for Peach Belt Conference basketball action on the men's side. It is a battle of Bobcats and Jaguars as the Jaguars host Georgia College and State University. Welcome to the broadcast position. I'm the Mac Daddy, Charles McNeil. Chad Cook is alongside. This is a battle of undefeated teams. Augusta comes in, ranked 15th in the nation, and they're facing a Bobcat squad that just won on Wednesday to open up their season. Yeah, it's interesting uh, to have two undefeated teams in, in on, on January 9th, but it's kind of explainable when you when you factor in the fact that one team has played two games and the other team has played one so it's definitely an odd season but uh, a little normalcy returns today here when you get two teams playing in the peach belt on a saturday afternoon that's something we're used to yeah it certainly is but uh, as far as both teams they'll be playing a little shorthanded Yes, no doubt about that. Augusta comes in here with uh, several players shelved for the afternoon, eight active players. I can't remember a time when Augusta has, uh, has taken the floor with eight active players. Goes back nearly a decade. I can remember maybe 2013 was the last time that happened. And, uh, you know, Georgia College has got a couple guys with injury. But, you know, the... The inactive player bug has hit um, Augusta in a much more significant fashion than the visiting team here today. Yeah, speaking to the visiting team, the Bobcats at the direction of Mark Gaines in his seventh season out of Georgia Southwestern, 1999 graduate there. He uh, told us just a moment ago that Justin Cave, who's missed most of all of the season thus far, still recuperating from a torn Achilles. That's going to be a big blow uh, throughout the year. Certainly, and, uh, you know, it's part of college athletics, professional athletics, having guys missing games. So, uh, you know, whether you have eight players or ten players, these are all college basketball players, so I know neither coach feels like uh, they're out here uh, – with a with an inferior squad and when it comes to conference play you always have to come to play no matter who's available and it'll be no different here today wednesday was just a couple of days uh removed from the new year and the bobcats in their home opener defeated francis mary in 78 to 66 they knocked down three or excuse me 10 three pointers in that game chad and this team likes to shoot it from long range. Yeah, this is a team we're very familiar with. Out of the last five times Augusta has taken the court, three of them were against Georgia College, counting today, and all three of those were played on this court with you and I at courtside. We're very familiar with the Bobcats. In the regular season finale last year, Georgia College got off to a, a monster start against Augusta, took a 20-point lead, and Augusta roared all the way back, won that game in overtime, and then only to play four days later in the first round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. And Augusta was not as lucky that night when, uh, when we fell, uh, got upset in the first round. And both nights, whether it be the, the – both games, whether it be the time Georgia College won or the time they almost won, three-point shooting – the play of Jordan Thomas was, uh, you know, imprinted all over the game, and it's a unique challenge playing Georgia College. They have three-point shooters all over the court, whether it be listed as a center or a power forward or a point guard. They can all shoot the ball. They play to the three-point line, and it's a unique challenge for Augusta, especially with Augusta's traditional inside focus team. No question. You mentioned Jordan Thomas in the opener against Francis Marion. He had 22 points in that game, and this guy is a terrific scorer. He's great. He's been here. Uh, this is his fourth season. He's got to be uh, the kind of player who is uh, threatening to become the school's all-time leading scorer. He's been an absolute uh, dynamo of an offensive player since day one in Milledgeville. Uh, I can't say I've enjoyed watching him play because so many times he has hurt us. But, uh, but I certainly respect his game out of Heritage High School. And, uh, you know, he's definitely a primetime player. You mentioned Heritage High School in Conyers, Georgia. Also, another Atlanta area product is uh, Cole Roberts. He had 15 points along with six rebounds in that opener. 
That's right. Yeah, Georgia College is tough. You know, we'll see them. They, they run a high ball screen, uh, usually with a big man that can shoot the ball, so he'll pop to the three-point line. They'll keep everything spread out. Augusta will have to scramble to keep track of all those shooters. And then may, hopefully, for, for Augusta's sake, hopefully make Georgia College pay on the other end when it comes to having to guard players like Tyshawn Crawford of Augusta. On the other side, Augusta 2-0 with the uh, wins coming against Lander University, 87-72 to 72 back on December the 2nd. And then on December 12th, Emmanuel College came in, and that was a 97-83 to 83 victory. And we had a chance to uh, witness those contests, Chad, and Augusta was really firing on all cylinders. They really were. You know, we talked uh, uh, extensively during those wins about how after that first half against Lander in the next three halves, how uh, locked in Augusta was offensively. Three players scoring at a 20-point-per-game clip. And, um, you know, we'll see if they can extend that after something like five weeks off here today. Yeah, we look forward to it. We look forward to bringing you exclusive coverage here on the Peach Bell Conference Network alongside Chad Cook. I'm the Mac Daddy, Charles McNeil, and now we're going to pause for the national anthem. Dip Beatrice in his 17th season preparing his Jaguars for action as the starting line is about to be rendered. And as Chad alluded to, the Augusta Jaguars coming in with a record of 2-0, undefeated, facing an undefeated team of the Bobcats of Mark Canis of Georgia College and State University. This is a Peach Belt Conference showdown. And you're watching on the Peach Belt Conference Network as we're excited to be bringing it to you. I'm the Mac Daddy, Charles McNeil. Chad Cook alongside into the Jaguar Nation around the globe. We wish you a very happy, safe, and prosperous new year. Well, Chad, this squad, Augusta, if they get off to a fast start, how can they make that happen? Well, you know, playing without two key players, two veterans, guys that stretch the defense by shooting the ball, uh, as well as anybody in the conference, Miguel Arnold and Troy Cracknell, it's, it's going to be very important that Tyshawn Crawford, the seven foot one center um, for Augusta, exerts his will early. He's got a, a size advantage. We're looking out here at the Georgia College players taking the court. Nobody out there has n near the size of Tyshawn. Tyshawn's a, a, a much improved player this season. So look for him to exert his will early and then the team's leader and point guard, Tyree Myers, look for him to not only recognize the need to get Tyshawn Crawford going, but also look to be more offensive-minded himself with the absence of Miguel Arnold and Troy Cracknell here today. Before we tip things off, Chad, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Georgia College and State University have two youngsters from this area on their roster. 
That's right, Richard Crawford out of Greenbrier High School and uh, Tucker Gilbert out of Lakeside High School and Augusta is starting, who just had retrieved that uh, tip ball, starting John Whitehead out of Glen Hills High School. His first career start, a freshman in his third game, and then an old teammate of his, Timmy Sellers, coming off the bench. So a lot of Augusta flavor out here today. Tyshawn Crawford working down low, goes with the reverse and comes up short. Tipped around and last touch by Augusta to beat Georgia College and the State University basketball. If you look at the front line of the bench area, you will see two of the players that Chad mentioned not playing in the game here to support their teammates. Miguel Arnold, the leading scorer, averaging 20 and a half points a game. And Troy Cracknell, who came off an injury to play in our last contest as we get a steal Myers kicking on the left side nice look to the weak side shot long and here comes Georgia College with their second possession that's kicked out of bounds by Augusta and it will be Georgia College State University basketball Augusta didn't take advantage of it on the other end but it was a great uh, steal by Darren Lucas White coming out of the screen and roll. We'll watch how Augusta defends the screen and roll. That'll be very important. Lucas White has a very difficult task in Jordan Tom guarding Jordan Thomas today, but if anybody's up to the task, it's Darren. That's Koneman. Chris Koneman knocking down that first basket. Get his squad on the board and the first basket of the contest, two to nothing at the 1845 mark. Long range three off the rim, no good, but there's a whistle and a foul in the act of shooting. That'll be assessed against number one for Georgia College, Jordan Thomas. His first in the team's first. 6'1", senior, and headed to the line for Augusta, Tyree Myers. Myers is six foot junior, 183 pounder out of Baltimore. Mount St. Joseph High School. So I mentioned before the game, Tyree Myers recognizing the need to get Tyshawn Crawford going offensively and then also being offensive minded himself. In three possessions so far, Tyree, as we see him get his own rebound here. Myers dumps it down low. Layup is up and good. Watch out for those big 22s coming down on you. Yeah, that's a great um, catch and move off the dribble by Tyshawn Crawford in tight quarters. I was going to say that in two, three offensive possessions, now make that four. Tyshawn, Tyree has set up Tyshawn twice in the post, in the paint, and then scored himself after getting fouled on the three-point shot. Turned the ball over there on that one. Jordan Thomas launched the first three in the attempt for Georgia College. If their game is flowing, they'll be shooting the ball quite a bit from long range. Yeah, Georgia College will play a very patient game. They'll milk the shot clock, and they'll look to take advantage of situations like this out of the screen and roll. That's Koneman. Rebounded by his teammate on the weak side, Roberts. The whistle and a foul. Jack Johnson in the lineup for Augusta. He's wearing number 40. Cole Roberts, redshirt senior, six foot seven, 270 pounder out of Riverwood High School. Made the first, missed the second, and Augusta with the board. The 15th ranked Jaguars lead it four to three, just underway in the first half. Three quarter court pressure broken easily by Augusta, and now the pull up. Lucas White, a little strong on that one. And back comes Thomas. Nice crossover dribble, but there's a steal by Myers. He accelerates to the basket. Myers with the reverse, no good. Tipped up and in 
by Timmy Sellers. Sellers, a recent transfer, coming in from Charleston Southern with his first hoop straight off the bench. And Sellers can be a big factor in this one. He sure can. Today's a great opportunity for the newcomer to really exert his will and make a big impact in this game. I see him as like the sixth man here today in this eight-man lineup. He'll get a lot of minutes. Tyshawn Crawford picking up an infraction. It's his first, and he will check out. And Lee Fleenor comes into the game for the Jaguars. That foul on Tyshawn Crawford is something to watch for. Having to guard somebody 25 feet away from the basket gets his first. Coach Dimitris takes him right out before he grabs his second. That's Koneman with the triple. We're deadlocked at six. Battle of undefeated. So pull up a chair and enjoy the action. Myers tries to answer back, no good. Flinor couldn't get up there and pull it down. And now the hit ahead pass, and it's a nice one for the finish at the rim, Austin Sloan. Sloan really excited us last year. He had some outstanding plays against the Jaguars in those four meetings. Sloan has uncommon athleticism. He saw a little bit of it there. He can really rise up above the rim as we see Tyree Myers being more offensive minded by the possession. That was number two for two as they come back the other way. Jordan Thomas end to end basketball from the Kristen Berry Fieldhouse Saturday afternoon to open up 2021 portion of this 2021 season. Bobcats with a two-point advantage, but looking to change that, and he does. Knocking down a long-range bomb, Lucas White with his first field goal. You know, when you're shorthanded, you can feel sorry for yourself, or you can do things to make up for the situation. That's what I see from Tyree Myers and Darren Lucas White. Being offensive-minded, Darren there taking the three-point shot with confidence. These two guards have been nothing but winners since coming on campus and they're looking to extend that here today. Jordan Thomas with a knockdown three. Had 22 points in their opening win over Francis Marion. They did so by 12 in that contest. And now to pull up by the freshman. He's strong on two attempts. Georgia College has a chance to extend their lead. There's a pull up from deep. Back iron no good, rebounded. And now a runner. To the basket, Lucas White, too strong on that one. And inside, there's a whistle and a foul. Yeah, I see nothing but decisiveness from Darren Lucas White and Tyree Myers here today. Darren got that ball in the open court. He had one thing on his mind. That was getting to the rim, and it got him to the free throw line in the process. Brandon Thomas whistled for the infraction. Two team fouls for the Bobcats, two for the Jaguars. As we've got our first media timeout of the afternoon and I'll tell you what Chad when you you look at the opening five minutes and change uncommon for the Bobcats to get up and down the floor but eventually you think things will slow down quite a bit yeah you know it's it'll be interesting to watch that here today with Augusta being so short-handed you almost wonder if they want to push things a little bit normally in, a, in an Augusta versus Georgia College game you would see uh, Georgia College try to shorten the game and limit the possessions and that's usually because Augusta might have a talent advantage. Georgia College might even have the, the talent advantage here today. So we'll watch that. Another thing is when Jordan Thomas drove and scored off zero passes and a push off of a made Augusta basket a few moments ago, that was after Tyree Myers drove to the basket and scored on the other end and went to the floor. So that might have been a senior Jordan Thomas taking advantage of a situation when Tyree wasn't up and Augusta wasn't matched up. So whether or not they play faster than usual, I think is still to be determined, but it's definitely something to watch out for. Kodeman and Thomas leading the attack for Georgia College. They each have five thus far. Efficient with their shooting as well. Four attempts, or four makes and seven attempts thus far. 
Augusta has been paced by Tyree Myers with four points, three points for Darren Lucas White. And two each for Tyshawn Crawford and Timmy Sellers as Lucas White misses the first free throw. Darren averaging 20 points, six and a half rebounds, and three assists a contest. Second leading scorer on the team. There's a steal by Lucas White. To the basket with the left hand, he lays it up and down. So Lucas White, not happy about the fact he missed those free throws, comes right back and makes a defensive play. Well, that's what you hear from coaches, you know, make up for it on the other end. Darren, he's used to, whether he messes up or not, he makes stuff happen on the other end. Did a great job of it there. Also making a fashion statement, Chad, to open up 2021 with the uh, leggings. Yeah. Not used to those. Good turnaround by the sub in off the bench. That's Tucker Gilbert, local product out of Lakeside High School. Lucas White with a rare pull up. Lucas White showing the range. He's got two triples. And back the other way, it's Gilbert misfiring. Crawford in the paint area, gets a bump. You know, I've talked a lot about Darren Lucas White being assertive offensively. We've seen him with Georgia College playing off of him, take two three-pointers with confidence, make them both. Not too long ago, we watched Georgia College basically not guard Darren in, the, in those final two games last year. He made him pay last year as well. But, um, you know, I don't think uh, today uh, playing off of Darren is going to be the thing that works best for the Bobcats. Turning and facing. Myers, no good. Rebounded by Crawford. He gets a little deeper dive. And there's a whistle and a foul. That might go against Gilbert. No, instead it goes against number 20. That's Chisholm, Luke Chisholm. Redshirt freshman. So Tyshawn Crawford at the line. Much improved so far this year. <laughs> First attempt after a long hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you figure during this long break, coaches have been spending a lot of time working on fundamentals? For sure, for sure. Nothing can substitute for gameplay, though. We saw Darren miss a couple free throws earlier. Tyshawn misses first there. I'm sure the Jaguars will get on track when it comes to knocking down the free ones. Another local product in the game. We talked about him just before the tip off. Richard Crawford out there on the floor. Pull up jump shot by Thomas. No good. Ball tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Augusta. So with Jared Carrier in the game, we're not used to seeing as much as of Jared. He's guarding Jordan Thomas. I like that from Coach Dimitris. Uh, give Jared a role to really excel in. He's a tough kid, and he's really hawking Jordan so far here today. Aggressive move by Roberts. Roberts' first field goal. He's got three, and we're deadlocked again at 17. Fourth tie of the early going. As Lucas White is on fire. He really is, and he has been all season. Uh, averaging 20 points through two games. You don't think of Darren as a volume scorer, but... The way you think of Darren in the past is not the way you should think of him here in this junior season. He's been magnificent all year. Chad, he's got 10 points already. Crawford. There's a tip in, no good. And ball tipped off the foot, last touch by Augusta. Good hustle by Darren Lucas White. Yeah, in addition to those 10 points, just almost got a steal there. He's gotten two steals before that moment. You know, in that Emmanuel game, we, we tried to figure out which Jag 
is the most improved player this season. Darren continues to make his bid for that, that uh, honor here today. There's a bomb put up there by Wesley Simpson. There is the dump down. Crawford in the low post and it gets it swatted away. He wanted a foul and didn't get one. But the ball will be last touched by the Bobcats. It'll be Jaguar basketball when we return after this timeout. So the Jaguars following the timeout with the basketball. Just under 12 minutes left. Second media timeout as Myers finds Whitehead the third with his first field goal. The third time was the charm for Whitehead. He had missed his first couple of jump shots, but knocked that one down. And to give the Jaguars back the lead. Jaguars with the lead for now the fifth time in this contest. 21-20. And there's a steal. Lucas White was wide open, didn't want it. Trying to find the big fella. Got double post set up. As Crawford lost it, then now he'll regain. Lucas White with the pull up, mid range, no good. Pulled out of there by Chisholm, and here comes the Bobcats. Crawford got it down low for the jump hook. By Roberts, no good. Tipped out to Crawford. Foul line, he lost control. Crawford and Crawford fighting for the basketball. Richard giving up size and strength to Tyshawn as they commiserate. Good teamwork and sportsmanship there. As Tyshawn Crawford will get a rest. Sellers now will go into the post position. With Whitehead, Flinor at the forwards. Thomas penetrates. Trying to hold that pivot foot, arch up the shot. No good, rebounded. Well, no good, and here comes Whitehead. Lucas White penetrates to the rack with the left hand. He scores it at a foul. What a finish by Darren. I'll tell you what I like just as much is John Whitehead's awareness. When he gathered that loose ball, he scooped it right over to Darren. That's the second time he's done that today. Recognize it, give it to the veteran, run the lane, let him make the decision. And Darren's decision making is second to none right now. And that might be a, a product of the first game. You might recall the first time he touched the ball, he tried to go down the floor, got it taken from him. And uh, once you hear see that happen, you know, you've got to defer to more experienced guards. 
Yeah, John, John's done a great job this season of adjusting his game. You know as well as I do that he was a, just a superstar in high school, did everything. There was nothing that his coach wouldn't want him doing. Here as a freshman, he has played a role. We saw him raise up, rise up and make a jumper earlier. He's, he's played tough defense, made good decisions, and made open shots when he's had the opportunity. And one thing we've yet to see, and I'm sure we'll see before we exit stage left, this season is that freakish athleticism he has where he literally can jump out of the building. It's only a matter of time. 23-20, Jaguars with the three-point lead, 15th ranked in the nation as they take on Georgia College, 1-0 after a victory against Francis Marion on Wednesday. There's a steal, Myers fighting for it. Thomas picks his pocket, and they say last touch by the Bobcats. I know Jordan Thomas wishes he had that one over again. It looked like he kind of let that one go out of bounds, thinking it would be Georgia College's ball. But on the other end, great job by Jared Carrier forcing that turnover. He's really taken the challenge of guarding Jordan Thomas and done an excellent job with it. You figure in his role as a backup under normal circumstances, he gets a chance to guard Tyree Myers and Darren Lucas White. So. He has prided himself on being a defender. And there's Flanor with the field goal. Lee Flanor. Look at uh, Jared, that job he's doing on Jordan Thomas. He's stuck to him right now. A series of moves that result in a basket and a foul. Timmy Sellers picks up the foul against Roberts, who will head to the line to shoot one. Your leading scorer in this contest is Darren Lucas White with 12 points thus far. He scored 10 in less than eight minutes of action. As he now has his first rest. And Sellers loses it out of bounds. Carrier and Myers now at the guards with Crawford back on the floor, Flinor and Whitehead the third, the five on the floor for Augusta. Dribble drive, kick out pass, and it goes right by the intended target. Usually I'm a big proponent of bounce passes, but not in that instance. What a luxury by Dip Mitras. He gives Jared Carrier a break, who's been doing a great job on Jordan Thomas. And who comes in for him? None other than the best defender in the conference, Darren Lucas White, to take the task of checking Thomas. Turn and face. Jump hook, no good. But Crawford, a little frustrated right now that he's not in his rhythm. Yeah, Coach Mitras just said, come on, Tyshawn, we need a and one. Let's go. One for two thus far at the line. Just under eight and a half minutes left from the Christenberry Fieldhouse. Thomas, and you talked about the defensive action. You just saw it right there with Lucas White hustling down the floor. He's an inspiring player to watch. He's been a guy that I've just enjoyed from day one. And now this year, getting to see him score the ball the way he does is just really uh, pleasing to me as a Jags fan. Sloan. The pull up, no good. Crawford saw it go right by him. And it's Augusta basketball. The three-point attempt left a long rebound and nobody touched it. And we 
we've got an official's timeout at the 7.56 mark, but we're going to keep it right here, Chad, because, you know, through two-thirds of, or three-fourths, rather, of the, uh, the first half, we've seen the Jaguars execute quite well despite the uh, short numbers. No doubt about it. And what I see from Augusta, you know, I've talked ad nauseum about it. You know, you got Darren Lucas White really stepping up offensively, scoring 12 out of the, the team's 26 points. But as well, Tyree Myers, maybe his shots haven't gone in, but he's he's creating opportunities. When he doesn't make it, sometimes a teammate will get a rebound. He's active. <laughs> and then in addition to that, you have the team manufacturing points. Um, I mentioned John Whitehead getting getting the ball into Darren's hands in the open court a couple times, letting him get to the free throw line, allowing him to get to the free throw line. Leif Lenore had a tough finish a little while ago on kind of a loose ball rebound situation. Augusta is uh, making do with what they have. Before today, you would say that the Jags lack a three-point shooter. Tyree Myers has always been able to make three-pointers. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but he usually doesn't concentrate on making three-pointers. Darren, all of a sudden, comes out and makes two threes in the first 10, 15 minutes of this game. So they're manufacturing opportunities and got another one there almost. So Augusta didn't didn't succeed at manufacturing an opportunity there, but that's what they were trying to do again. You know, you had a miss from Darren, a follow-up from Tyshawn, and then a third, a second attempt at a follow-up from Lee Flaneur, who unfortunately gets the foul, his first of the game. Yeah, Jaguars thus far with 10 second chance points in the game. And they score, like to score in the paint as well throughout the season. They have 12 thus far. Looks like a point of emphasis for Georgia College, not normally for them. They've also scored 12 in the paint and was looking for 14 as there's a whistle underneath and a foul, and that one will be assessed inside against Tyshawn Crawford. That'll be his second for the big guy. Six for the Jaguars. One more, they'll be over the limit. Two Roberts on. in the act of shooting will toe the line for two. Two on Tyshawn Crawford's a big moment in the game. Augusta was leading 26-22 at, at that moment. Um, you know, that stat you shared a second ago, Charles, says it all. Ten points. Did you say ten second chance points from Augusta? Out of 26. That says it all right there. You know, you usually don't get 40% of your offense on second chance opportunities. So Augusta Again, manufacturing chances. Jack Johnson off the pass from Lucas White couldn't finish. And now a three ball goes errant, saved but into the hands of Flinor. Lucas White is everywhere. Myers drives through contact. There's a whistle and he'll head to the line, I do believe. An opportunity to shoot two. Yet another example of Augusta manufacturing opportunities out of nowhere. Tyree Myers, when do we see him dribble the ball at the court and attack the basket with zero passes? Almost never. Here, he knows his team needs him, puts his head down, gets into the body of the defender, and gets to the free throw line. Here's some encouragement from the, the bench area. Miguel Arnold and O'Neal Armstrong, Tyshawn Crawford. Myers coolly buries a pair to give Augusta a four point edge inside of seven minutes left. Roberts on another four way to the hole, draws a foul, and he'll go back to the line. One obvious thing that Augusta was going to have to watch out for here today is foul trouble. 
Tyshawn Crawford's already gotten two. We just see a second foul called on Lee Flanor, if I'm not mistaken. Is that last foul on Lee? I missed, Actually, it. I missed that one. Maybe it was on Jack Johnson now that I uh, see him going out of the game. But, uh, you know, watching for guys like Lee Flanor, Darren Lucas White, Tyree Myers picking up their second, that is definitely something Augusta will want to guard against. Hunter Norman now in to run the point duties. Richard sophomore, out of Kennesaw. Roberts with a launch. Rebounded by Flinor. Here comes Myers. Gets the ball screen. Elevates. Shoved underneath, and there's a foul. That one will go against Wesley Simpson. So for the second possession in a row, Tyree Myers, the team's heady point guard, gets to the foul line after, you know, dribbling the ball up and kind of being aggressive offensively. Both teams spending a lot of time at the free throw line. Myers with the knockdown on the second one. Myers now with seven points in the game. Wide open, three-point attempt is good. Brandon Thomas, his first field goal, the transfer from Mercer University. Six foot three, 250 pound, 15 pound rather, redshirt sophomore. Now Myers. Lucas White for another three ball, no good. Norman. Kahneman. They try to get it down low, and they do. And that's blocked over the top by Sellers. And Dip Mitris is not happy. Uh, foul is assessed. Put it on the board for a hot second. Looks like they say it was Tyree Myers, not Timmy Sellers. So Myers getting the foul on the floor. Sends his opposite number, Simpson, to the line. And Simpson's the only player, first player other than Roberts to shoot from the foul line for the Bobcats. Prior to that, those two attempts. The Bobcats had seven attempts from the free throw line, all of those coming in the person of Cole Roberts. There's a lob over the top. Whistle outside. Gotta go against Norman. Pretty good break for Augusta. Tyree Myers had gotten, had gotten himself into a tough position there. Ends up at the foul line after Georgia College couldn't resist the urge to bump him with the body. Two more free throws for Myers. Gives him nine now. Nine points in the game. Seven of nine shooting from the charity strike. Norman working against Lucas White. Gets it down low to Roberts. He turns and faces. And there's a traveling violation against the Bobcats. Big fella. Lucas White in the front court. Four, 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 
Working against man-to-man -man defense. Carrier to Myers. Flinor looking to work. Turns, faces, goes up high. Shoots it over the rim, and back comes Georgia College. On the wing. And there's a steal by Carrier, then stolen back. And ball tipped our way. Georgia College basketball with 4.37 left. The Jaguar lead is down to two. So the Bobcats with the chance to take the lead just before the next media timeout. Pull up three, no good. Rebounded by Flinor, and here come the Jaguars. Lucas White. Does a, a move that you're not familiar with in basketball. He actually pulled off a split underneath. Yeah, you know, I, I, I look out there and I see Tyree Myers and Darren Lucas White. They've played pretty much the whole game, you know, 16 minutes in now. Look, they're looking a little winded. Uh, they have a lot on their shoulders. Tyshawn Crawford on the bench for the rest of the half, most likely. Uh, those two guys are uh, giving it everything they have. We'll see if they can dig deep and get a second win here in these last four minutes of this first half. Nearly a steal. And there is a steal. Lucas White lost his balance not once but twice and then gathered himself enough to draw contact. And he will now go to the line because both teams are over the limit. For the Bobcats, that's their 10th. So that means two free throws coming up for Darren Lucas White following this timeout. As uh, 3.45 on the clock, media timeout. We'll keep it right here. Chad, in this final three minutes and 45 seconds, the Jaguars leading the Bobcats in this battle of undefeated by 2, 31 to 29. Assess both sides, if you will, and what you've seen out of their play in the opening 17, nearly 17 minutes of action. Well, I think, um, you know, picking up where I left off a second ago with uh, Darren Lucas White and Tyree Myers playing, you know, pretty much the entire game, having so much offensive uh, uh, responsibility on their shoulders. Um, right when I explained all that and, and, and wondered out loud if uh, those two guys could catch a second win here, we see Darren just diving all over the floor, covering ground, helping the helper, knocking balls loose. Um, you know, I called watching Darren play, I called it inspiring earlier, and I mean it as far as, uh, you know, the amount of effort that he expends on the court is just something that coaches should really, uh, really, really show their players as an example. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of the story of today's game, if you ask me. Can Augusta overcome the fact that, you know, two key scorers and shooters aren't playing um, you know, only eight players available, um, you know, with seven foot one Tyshawn Crawford on the bench with foul trouble. You know, the chips are really stacked against the Jaguars. They're doing a good job of maintaining so far, but there's a lot of basketball to be played 24 minutes. And to me, that's the that's the uh, open question. Can they string 40 minutes together and uh, come away with a Peach Belt Conference opening win? Darren Lucas White at the line, third time today, and knocks down his first of the afternoon. He's got 13 to lead all scores. Now 14. This is the 59th meeting between the Jaguars and the Bobcats. Augusta leads the all-time series 36-22. Chad and I have mentioned in our pregame coverage the most recent contest happening in the Peace Belt Conference tournament quarterfinal, an upset win as there's a rejection by the two George, uh, Glen Hills products, Timmy Sellers and John Whitehead III, pulling up with a three. And then not being able to save it, but excellent athleticism by the two newcomers. 
Tyree Myers giving a hand up to the bench saying, my bad on that one, shooting an air ball there, doing everything he can. Coach uh, Dimitris shook his head up and down like, that's okay. We need you to be aggressive, Tyree. Three-point attempt by Thomas, no good. Followed up inside, shot rattles around the rim, no good. A whistle and a foul is going to be assessed against Augusta. And that's John Whitehead the third picking up the personal. It's his second. For the Jaguars, that's their ninth. So Wesley Simpson will head back to the line. He's one of two from the strike. He buries the first one. Whitehead to third, checks out. Carrier back in for the Jags. Simpson now with six points in the game. Six for Cole Roberts, five for Koneman, and five for Jordan Thomas. So balanced scoring for Mark Gaines and his 1-0 Bobcats. Pull-up jump shot by Darren Lucas White. He's putting on a show. 16 Darren. points now in this opening half for Lucas White. Almost half the offensive production. It's been that way throughout. I didn't think the junior could top his offensive performances from the first two games, but he's on track to do that here today. There's a block by Sellers, his second one of the afternoon. Lucas White with another opportunity. Got it out to Myers. Good defensive effort by Koneman to stop him. Now the pull up free throw line. Carrier just off the mark. Kept the line to Flinor and then threw his legs and brought out by Simpson. Here he comes in the front court. Simpson. Koneman to the basket. Draws contact and he'll go to the line for two. Timmy Sellers whistle for the foul there. Coach Dimitris told him on the contest, good job, Timmy. Felt like he had the vertical, uh, hands up, straight up defense. But it was a good job by Koneman really getting into Timmy's body and definitely selling the, uh, the foul call. Coach Dip Beatrice gets a sideline warning by the officials. As we near the one minute mark with Lucas White in control of the basketball and in control of this contest with 16 points, nearly half of the Jaguars offense has come from this talented player. Ball tipped away, shot clock down to four, three. Shot blocked in the corner, and it goes out of bounds. And that'll be a shot clock violation. It'll be Augusta basketball as Coach Beatrice's arms outstretched. You see Jordan Thomas back in the game. He's got two fouls, but with a short clock here, you know, under a minute offensive possession, Coach Gain is taking the gamble to get his offensive production here. 
Roberts really wanted that one as he yells with emotion. Foul picked up by Jack Johnson. Johnson trying to hold off Roberts, but giving up nearly 80 pounds in the process is a difficult task. So just like we saw, we see Jordan Thomas go out for the defensive possession for Georgia College. Coach Dimitris puts John Whitehead, who has two fouls in, for this offensive possession for Augusta, puts him in for carrier. See if the Jags can get a better offensive possession going that way. I think what we'll see is Darren Lucas White going one-on-one -on -one here. I think Mitris likes the matchup. Roberts now three of nine from the free throw line. He had been a little bit more efficient. They would have a lead, the Bobcats trailing. As a gorgeous drive and a finish. Tyree Myers, the six foot junior, making it happen for the Jags, his second field goal. And he's been very proficient at the line. The Jaguars with a four point lead with 17.4 seconds left and a timeout on the floor. This is Peace Belt Conference basketball, powered by Augusta University. And for complete highlights of this and all Jaguar athletic events on the hardwood, check out AUGB Ball on all social media platforms. And Zone 706, making things happen. A perfect combination here in the Garden City of Augusta. Gorgeous winter. Afternoon, 45 degrees on the outside, client controlled, 72 right here inside this building. And Chad Cook along my side for another exciting ride as we waited quite some time, Chad, for this game to come. And it's been an exciting first half thus far as we wind down to our final possession, potentially of the first half. In the post, Roberts, pocket pick, gets it back, launches at the buzzer. Shot is no good, and we'll go to the halftime locker room with Augusta leading by four. You know, before we go, I'll say it's a fitting end to the first half, what you had on that last possession with 10 seconds to go. Georgia College looking to get a good shot, not able to do so because of Jared Carrier's activity on the defensive end, knocking the ball loose, then Darren Lucas White coming in, knocking it loose again, and then a prayer of a shot. Uh, fall short at the end. That's the kind of scrappiness that has allowed Augusta to take a four point lead after 20 minutes. And it'll be fascinating to see if they can extend that effort through 40 minutes of play with this shorthanded crew. So the Jaguars facing the Bobcats for the 59th time in men's basketball. Interesting side note of this one. The Jaguars with 36 victories, looking for their 37th, have 37 points on the scoreboard as we head to the halftime locker room. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with more Peach Belt Conference basketball. You're watching the Peach Belt Conference Network.
We're back inside the Chris and Barry Fieldhouse for exclusive coverage of Jaguar basketball. I'm the Mac Daddy Charles McNeil. I'm a broadcast partner is Chad Cook, an alum of Augusta University and a proud alum, I should say, as well. And we wish you again a very happy new year. Hope your year has gotten off to a great start. And if you're a fan of the Jaguars, you've got a top 20 rated team who leads the Bobcats, also undefeated, coming in at 1-0, 37-33 at the first half break. And uh, with limited numbers for the Jaguars, what do you think Dip Meters talked to him about at the halftime locker room? Well, you know, I don't know, to be honest with you. We'll have to <laughs> ask him that after the game. You know, from here, from where I sit, I see a team that is, uh, you know, fighting and scrapping for every little thing it can get. It's worked out so far getting Tyshawn Crawford back on the court after sitting the final eight minutes of the first half. It will be a help. We'll have to keep him out of the foul trouble. John Whitehead and Timmy Sellers also have two fouls. So three of the eight available bodies are, uh, were in some kind of foul trouble in the first half. So keeping bodies on the floor and at the same time finding some kind of way to get them rest will be paramount. Uh, you know, watching the guys shoot, uh, you know, go through the layup lines there right, be right before the second half start. You see, I saw Darren Lucas White take a couple dribbles and pull up and shoot a jump shot, but he didn't elevate at all, which, you know, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that, you know, you go play 20 minutes as hard as he played, and you wonder if he can put another 20 minutes of good, actually great basketball together like he did in the first half. You see him conserving his energy in the layup lines, and that's really what I look for is, you know, will Darren, will Tyree be able to continue their play, and will Tyshawn Crawford and maybe another guy like John Whitehead and Timmy Sellers and Leif Lenore, um, you know, be able to augment what those two guards from Baltimore have been able to do here in the first 20 minutes. In case you're just joining us, Started the second half and off a set play, they went to Whitehead over the top. Speaks volumes for that youngster's maturity thus far to get the opening salvo. But back they come the other way, and it's the blue, the uh, green cladded GC Bobcats who uh, came in with a record of 1 0. Their victory 78 66 on Wednesday over Francis Marion. They knocked down 10 three pointers in that contest thus far in this ball game. They have made four threes and uh, did so in 10 attempts. So four of 10 from long range as Crawford has to have an early break on the bench. And that leads to an inside play and a basket score by Cole Roberts. Yes. Roberts, their leading scorer at the end of the opening half. He had eight, now give him 10. First player in double figures for their squad. Wesley Simpson had seven. Kahneman had six, five for J Jordan Thomas, their leading scorer who came in averaging 22 points a game as Whitehead scores back the other end and then he hits the floor. So the freshman with his second field goal and here come the three balls. A little Autumn. bit of a comedy of errors here for Augusta. 27 seconds into the second half, Tyshawn Crawford picks up his third foul, has to go to the bench. John Whitehead who has the ball now drops in a nice little jumper but then stumbles on the way back down the court, allows Koneman to take and make a three-point shot. But, you know, I see John Whitehead out there hustling after loose balls. He was able to make that uh, last shot fall. That's the kind of – he's the kind of gamer who Augusta needs to step up in this moment. Again, with Tyshawn Crawford bowing out in the first 27 seconds of this half with his third foul, guys like John will definitely have to step up and, uh, you know, make themselves heard here in these final 20 minutes. Timmy Sellers leads the ball on the baseline, going out of bounds off of uh, GC Bobcats, Kahneman, who can't believe the call. So Augusta basketball, Myers will trigger. Bounce pass to Flinor. Feels the defender, goes up over him. Jump hook in the air, too strong and pulled out of there by Koneman. Koneman out there with Simpson, Roberts, Thomas, and number 20 is Chisholm. There's the lob over the top. Simpson on the post up, shot no good, tipped around and Lucas White with the board. Lucas White 
averaging six and a half rebounds a game as he gets it in the post and then gets the pocket pick by Roberts. Thomas kicks it ahead to Koneman and it goes through his hands and out of bounds. Checking the Peace Bell Conference scoreboard, women's action, Lander leads Clayton State 70 to 41 inside of the final four minutes of that contest and Georgia College not playing the Augusta women today, instead playing USC Aiken and they lead 59-52 over the Lady Pacers late in the fourth quarter. Nice look, and there's a dunk. Slam dunk. Fleenor from Myers. It was a thing of beauty. So not the prettiest first two and a half minutes of this second half with Tyshawn Crawford going out and uh, John Whitehead falling on the ground and opening up uh, a three-point attempt for Koneman on the other end. But Augusta staying, uh, you know, staying ahead of Georgia College again by being opportunistic. John Whitehead with a nice little floating jump shot and Lee Flanor with a dunk on a beautifully executed screen and roll off the handoff from Flanor to Myers. Back to Flanor with the sweet bounce pass. Augusta takes a three-point lead by any means necessary here after a couple minutes in the second half. Nine points for Koneman. Lucas White leading the way for Augusta with 16 points. Tyree Myers with 11 as he just dished his fifth dime of the game. Tyshawn Crawford has four. Leaf Lenoir with four. John Whitehead the third with four. Timmy Sellers with two for the uh, Jaguars as they lead by three, as Chad just alluded to, 41-38. I talked about the first few minutes not being the prettiest thing in the world. We still see Darren Lucas White smarting his face. You know, he took a shot in the face on that drive when he lost it in the middle of the paint. So he's trying to shake that off. He's trying to lead the team in scoring, and he's trying to lead, and he's trying to guard Jordan Thomas, maybe the best scorer in the Peach Belt Conference. There's a steal. Lucas White with the scoop. Win a little English. Why don't you? Yeah, we just heard uh, the, the basket being credited to John Whitehead. That was most certainly Darren Lucas White with the steal and the finish. What a great play by Darren. And then right on cue, Darren takes a charge. You know, I call Jordan Thomas the best, maybe the best uh, offensive player in the Peach Belt Conference. Darren Lucas White is playing like the best player in the Peach Belt Conference here two and a half games into this 2020-21 season. As Chad alluded to, this is the Peach Belt Conference opener. Much anticipated. Jaguars trying to stake their claim for another Peach Belt Conference championship, and it starts here with Darren Lucas White with another runner to the hole. You know, he now we're starting to see Augusta call plays for Darren on, a, on the regular. They've done that so far this season more, but today he's getting his number called repeatedly, and he's answering the call every time. Pull up three, and it's good. That's Brandon Thomas. His second triple out of McDonough, Georgia. He's got six. And with those three balls, they've cut the lead back to four. Fleenor spins, twists, jump hook in close. No good. Rebounded by Roberts. Simpson in the front court. Extra pass to Sloan for three. Sloan's first three, his teammates third here in the second half. And they're lighting it up now. Six threes, they had 10 in their win against Francis Marion and 11 the last time they faced Augusta. 
As that three ball by my uh, by uh, Lucas White was a little strong. Here's Thomas. He's been quiet. Thomas with the extra step to the basket. No good. And looking to run is Myers. Gets the high ball screen. Myers to the basket. Kicks it out to Whitehead. To a launch. Just a little bit strong. And we've got an injured player back behind the field. The Sloan goes to the basket. There's a whistle inside. A foul as Roberts. Gets up under his own power and now be assisted by Thomas. Over to his bench area. As Dip Metris, you saw him at center court working with the two Glen Hills products, namely John Whitehead III. As yeah, Dip is. probably trying to, in some way, in one way or another, trying to communicate to them the fact that. Um, you know, at this level, every possession counts so much. You know, we saw Darren Lucas White string together a couple buckets, put Augusta ahead 45 to 38. And then just before you could bl even blink, Brandon Thomas makes a three. Austin Sloan makes a three. Georgia College is now at the free throw line with a chance to go up one after trailing by seven just a moment ago. So every transition from offense to defense, Every uh, opportunity to uh, uh, block out and get a loose ball, uh, you know, keep the other team from getting an extra shot. Everything's so important in, in, in this kind of game. And I can imagine maybe Dip in some kind of way trying to communicate that to the freshman Whitehead here uh, early in the second half. Tyshawn Crawford still on the bench along with Jack Johnson and John Whitehead. So the five on the floor, a carrier, along with Lucas White, Myers, Sellers, and Flinor. Say Happy New Year to all our friends watching down in Miami. and all around the globe on the Peach Belt Conference Network. As Sloan knocks down the free throw. Austin Sloan, Houston County High School. And we're deadlocked. At 45. Tyree Myers picking up his third foul, Chad. He'll remain on the floor. Well, no, that's got to be uh, Wesley Simpson. I make my mistake. That was on Wesley Simpson. This is our possession. And that's important for Georgia College because Simpson's one of their most potent offensive weapons, for sure. Lenore fighting for his loose ball. Tyshawn Crawford back on the floor. So a tie game. Augusta had a four point lead at the break. But a 12 to eight run by the Bobcats. Leads to this. And there's Flinor, not expecting the pass from Carrier. And he travels. Six. 
So we're seeing Tyshawn Crawford back in the game much earlier than we would in normal circumstances with three fouls here under 14 minutes to go returning to the game. Usually we'd see him out for several minutes longer, but with only eight players shorthanded, Dimitris goes with the big seven footer. Roberts trying to fight off defenders. Drew contact and he'll go to the line. Cole Roberts has lived at the free throw line with now his 10th attempt. Yeah, you mentioned Roberts being at the line a lot. You know, we came into this game thinking Augusta, uh, a path to victory would be to exert their will on the on the inside. And it's in a, in a lot of ways been Robert Roberts doing it for Georgia College. Yes, one of the things that these big guys have to do around the conference when they're facing Tyshawn Crawford is what's the issue? That's right, and it's worked well and gotten uh, Crawford in foul trouble. Doing it on both ends there. Darren Lucas White forces the offensive foul on Jordan Thomas. That's three on Thomas. So if I'm not mistaken, you know, we talked about it a second ago, Wesley Simpson and Thomas, Jordan Thomas, with three fouls. That's big for Georgia College. So we've, we're seeing Tyshawn earlier than we would normally see him with those three fouls, and he takes advantage of the playing time there. Crawford looking for another opportunity, loses the basketball, goes to the floor. The seven footer going down hard and Roberts trying to pin him like the WWE. And they'll call hell ball, possession arrow in favor of the visitors and they'll have it following this media timeout.
And we're back to live action inside the Christenberry Fieldhouse. Second half. Augusta with a slim one-point lead and the basketball. And Tyree Myers on the floor with John Whitehead on his left. Darren Lucas White, the leading scorer for Augusta in this one. Lee Flanor, Tyshawn Crawford. And we call an illegal screen against Augusta's. Lee Flanor picking up the foul as Richard Crawford. Now with the basketball running the point duties. Outstanding high school athlete when he was in town. Kahneman. And ball grazes off the hands of Augusta. And out of bounds it'll go. GC basketball. That's Crawford. And now the same call the other way. Chisholm picking up that one. So Chisholm, that's his second. Both teams with five team fouls, 49-48. The Jaguars leading by one in this battle of undefeateds to open up the Peach Belt Conference season for the Jaguars. Second game of the season for Georgia College who opened up against Francis Marion with a victory on Wednesday. And there's Roberts again. He's been a thorn in our side. He had 15 in the opener along with six rebounds and two assists. And he's playing rock solid as this one's on the sideline out of bounds. And a defensive stand by the Bobcats. This is an important stretch here. Georgia College just got a second chance bucket on the other end and a turnover. See if Augusta can write things here. Kahneman. Not settling, taking it to the basket and scoring. He's got two triples and two two-point field goals in this game. As he now has 11, he's in double figures. Second player on their squad with double figures. Roberts with 14 and Kahneman now with 11. Back door, Whitehead, count it, and a foul. It's the first two-point bucket we've seen from John Whitehead this year. I thought he might rise up and dunk that. The freshman gets to tie things at the line here. Yeah, he's been... Work at that two-point game here today. Three field goals. He misfires on that one. Chance at the conventional three-point play. So 9.33 left in the regulation. Bobcats with a one-point lead and the basketball. Roberts. Koneman. Into the post, Lenore finds Myers at the top. Whitehead didn't see a lane, brings it up to Myers, and now he'll send Whitehead to the other side. Trying to get in the post, there it is. Oh, and pocket pick, but not without contact. I couldn't help but calling out on that one. Tyshawn got <laughs> slapped hard. The call didn't come for a second. It did come eventually, though. Chad ready to put on his striped suit. <laughs> Crawford can't find the range. Oh, 
Two for five at the line. 52-51, 8.49 left. Into the post. Brandon Thomas, now dribble out and reset to Crawford. Ponemann, high ball screen for Crawford and a three ball, rattling halfway down and out, followed up and off the window, that's Simpson. So Simpson's second field goal, first of two point line. He's got eight and it's 54-51 Bobcats. As they face the 15th ranked team in all the land, Augusta. There's Whitehead, top of the circle for three. What a big up. bucket by the freshman ties things. He almost tied things with a three-point play earlier, and he finishes the job there with that three. Crawford surveying the defense. Augusta in a man-to-man -man and a pull-up. Planked off the rim, rebounded by Flanor, and off he comes to Myers. Lucas White on the right side is now Tyree. Gets it down low. Crawford holding on, gets a power dribble in the low post, goes to the right hand. Ball tipped away from him. He wanted contact and foul, no whistle. Now a pull up. Ball tipped around, controlled by Crawford and off his hands. Last touch by Koneman. It'll be Augusta basketball after this official timeout. 7.18 left. Now we're getting into the part of the game where seven minutes to go, it's anybody's ball game. No more worries about fatigue or foul trouble. Who can win these last seven minutes? And you see Tyshawn Crawford make an uncommonly uh, co great connection with his block partner, his inside partner, Leif Lenore.
How many will that be on Tyree? That's a tough call. See, what you have now is Wesley Simpson posting Tyree Myers, something Georgia College did last year as well, putting Simpson in the post, a guard, but a very strong and uh, capable post-playing guard. Tyree's also capable on the defensive end. Uh, Simpson got the better of him there. I felt like Simpson was in the middle of the paint for at least three seconds. We'll see if we'll see if he continues to uh, you know to try to exploit that matchup in the paint. Simpson makes a pair. Third player now in double figures for the Bobcats. So Simpson with 11. Toneman with 11 and Roberts with 14 to lead the attack as Flinor goes off the window, count it. And some harm on the play. What a play by Lee Flidor. Back-to-back field goals for him. The last one on the lob. And he caught it in one motion and flipped it over his shoulder into the rim. And this time, posting up and finishing at the rim. So at halftime, you know, you asked me what I expected I, or what D Coach Dimitri said to the team. I said, I have no idea. But I did say guys like John Whitehead and Lee Flanor stepping up, it will be something that's needed. And they've both done that. Lee with a couple bu buckets in a row. We saw Whitehead with the three earlier, the and one to cut it to one. John Whitehead and Lee Flanor in these last three or four minutes have been dynamite for Augusta. And now Koneman steps out. Front end in the one-on-one -on -one didn't work out for Robert, so three-point lead for Augusta with the basketball. Whitehead. Now we've got an offensive foul against Lee Flinor. Spin move, Flinor right there all over him and great defensive effort by the Jaguars. It really was a great defensive effort by Lee on that play. Got called for the offensive foul on the other end. Didn't dwell on that. Got, in, got his feet in the right place, forced to travel against an excellent guard, Wesley Simpson. Nearing the five minute mark, Chad. We've had a beauty. Off the window, no good for Lucas White, fighting for the rebound, those two guys just talking about. And Simpson comes away with it over to Crawford. Into the corner. There's Thomas for three. Short of the mark. Kept alive by Simpson. To the floor goes Robert. He goes sliding with the basketball. And the timeout is called by GC. The Bobcats calling a timeout. And Tyree Myers has a cramp. You can see it visibly. You know, before I knew that Tyree was smarting there, I pointed at him on the, on the floor near half court. It does look like a cramp, thankfully, if he can fight it off, that is. Um, but I pointed at him because bodies were everywhere. You know, I think it was Lee Flanor on the ground with, uh, with uh, was it Roberts on the, uh, in the paint. Tyshawn, Tyree on the ground at half court. You know, 451, I mentioned fatigue not being a factor anymore. Besides Tyshawn Crawford, foul trouble not being a factor anymore. Now it's all about who can gut out a victory. We're in the 50s. How often do you see a Peach Bell game in the 50s in the final five minutes? Well, today's one of those days, and who can get tough buckets when they need them most will be the differentiator here. Now, whether we see Tyree Myers come out of this huddle means a lot to me. You know, smarting from that cramp, will he be able to retake the court? And it looks like he will. 
the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was this is the Peach Belt Conference. It's the Peach Belt Conference opener for the Jaguars as well, where you know a lot is on the line. People trying to get in that top echelon, stay there throughout the season being one thing. The second part is it's also wild card Saturday in the NFL, and we've seen guys banging around like they're playing without helmets on. That's right. Jump shot up and down by Sloan. Sloan's made some key baskets for Georgia College. The three earlier that cut it to one, and then a nice little uh, in-between shot there, about a 12-footer. And limited action. He's got eight. 59-58, one-point lead for the Jaguars, and the fabulous freshman John Whitehead, the third, may be called on down the stretch. Tyree Myers, dribble penetration, goes in, goes off the window, ball tipped out. Here comes Jordan Thomas in the front court. Goes right by the defender, but there's the Glen Hills combination sandwiching him and forcing the basketball out of bounds where GC will hold on to the possession with 4.12 left and 25 seconds on the shot clock. Close to five seconds as they get it in. Simpson to the basket, he scores. Simpson's so great around the hoop, whether it be posting up or knifing through the defense with off the dribble like he did there. Simpson now with 13, 60 to 59. Bobcats with the lead as Tyree Myers with the launch. Myers also has 13. Leads to a timeout on the floor. 3.47, hope you've enjoyed the action. And it has been nip and tuck. Augusta and Georgia College and State University separated by 90 miles of driving, about 65 miles in distance and Always an interesting encounter, whether you're at the Centennial Center or right here on the campus of Augusta University and the Christenberry Fieldhouse. No fans in attendance. This leads to the Jaguar Nation. We're counting on you for your support throughout the year, so please follow the Jaguars wherever you may be on AugustaJags.com and all social media landscapes. Of course, make sure you check out for exclusive highlights, interviews, and much more. Go to AUGB Ball on the World Wide Web at AUGB Ball. You know, we saw Tyree Myers make that go-ahead bucket, curling off the screen, catching and shooting from about 18 feet. And Coach Mitris leapt to his feet and called frantically for a timeout. He didn't want Georgia College to inbound that ball. He wanted to talk to his team before, uh, you know, Georgia College had a chance to answer, maybe set something up. We'll see if Augusta sets up in something besides a traditional man-to-man -man defense or maybe even just giving Myers an extra chance to shake off that cramp he was smarting from earlier. The, vet, the veteran backcourt of Wesley Simpson and Jordan Thomas. And the long pull-up three by Brandon, the red shirt sophomore. Nothing but air on that one. And turnover will give the ball to Augusta. 61-60, the Jags with a one-point edge with 3-3-3 on the clock as they inbounds. Darren Lucas White having an outstanding day. 22 points, four rebounds, four assists. Don't have his steal numbers as yet, but you know you can count on him for that as he got a shot rejected. Into the hands of Flinor. He got deeper position and drew a foul against Sloan. Nothing easy here in these last few minutes. On that last stop by Augusta, you saw um, uh, Georgia College didn't go to Simpson in the post, but he and Tyree Myers were having a battle in the paint, fighting for position. Two strong guards competing. Coach Mitris now takes 
Tyshawn Crawford out as the team transitions to defense after this free throw, trying to save him from, you know, potentially getting that fifth foul. He'll come in probably offense, defense, trading minutes, uh, trading turns with Timmy Sellers. Now let's see, Charles, if Simpson and uh, Myers, I was going to say Simpson and Myers, start battling in the post. Dimitris puts John Whitehead on Simpson. I like that move with more length on uh, John's part. There's Roberts, rebounded inside by Whitehead with the long arms. So with Whitehead, you have versatility. He can play both inside and outside. Myers to the floor, holding onto the basketball. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Great hustle by Tyree Myers. He got that ball poked loose by Austin Sloan. The ball appeared to be Sloan's to have, and Myers just laid out the kind of diving for a loose ball that, you know, makes the difference between winning and losing. I was going to say, uh, you know, fortunate for Augusta because the possession arrow is pointing their way. But not only do they get, not only does Tyree get possession of the ball, uh, he gets it long enough for Augusta to call timeout. So they retain the possession arrow and possession of the ball at the same time. Uh, really good play by Tyree Myers. And we'll see eight seconds to go. What will Augusta do to try to get a shot off with a short clock? I'll say they'll probably go to Darren Lucas White here, but we'll see. As we wind down this one, Chad, just looking at some of the numbers. Georgia College shooting 19 of 50 from the field, 38%. So that Jaguar defense has been playing Tremendous while the Jaguars shooting 46% on 23 of 50 from the floor. And Crawford got the ball stolen from him. Leads to an opportunity from three. Now they'll penetrate, and that one's stolen back by Flinor. So Flinor with a big steal there. Augusta, three of nine from long range. Georgia College, seven of 22 from distance. Georgia College, 15 of 23, 65.2% from the line. Augusta shooting 56.5% from the line this afternoon, 13 of 23. As Lucas White continues. Lucas White now with nine points in the second half. That's a big time player making a big time play. Darren Lucas White, he wouldn't have called him a three point shooter before today's game. But that's all changing here. 25 points for Darren Lucas White. Came in the second leading scorer on the team. Just a half a percentage point behind Miguel Arnold, who's sitting this one out. Eighty-nine ticks on the clock in regulation. Augusta with a two-possession lead and the basketball. Myers brings the ball across the timeline and stops right at the Jaguar. Goes up top to Crawford, takes contact, gives it back to Myers. Myers takes contact, finds a wide-open Whitehead for three. Side rim, no good. And here they come. Big possession for Georgia College, and they just drew the fifth foul on Tyshawn Crawford. just had shades of the Florida game against LSU where Miguel Arnold found the loose shoe and tossed it onto the court. He and Troy Cracknell having a joke about it. The shoe belonged to Tyree Myers who 
said thanks so much. Had there been a Georgia College shoe, we might have had a different situation. First free throw, no good. Second one is buried. And the person of Wesley Simpson. So Simpson needed both, got one of them. Still a two possession game. And we're inside the final minute. And they put pressure on. And Lucas White turns it over. Driving. Basket is up and good by Jordan Thomas. So Thomas, who had been held in check until that point with a big field goal and now more pressure. Two-point game, 40 seconds remaining. The Peach Bell Conference opener for Augusta. Timmy Sellers inside, rejected at the rim. Whistle and a foul committed by Georgia College. That's against Roberts. Big call that time against GC. Wesley Simpson's arguing for a travel call there. I kind of see his point on that one. Timmy Sellers with a chance to give Augusta either a three or four point lead here. Augusta had a lot of trouble with that pressure from Georgia College on the last two possessions. Turned it over once and looked a little out of sorts on this last one, even though Timmy did get to the foul line eventually. It's understandable with Augusta kind of, kind of playing with two guards on the whole roster today. Darren Lucas White and Tyree Myers having a little trouble with that pressure. Sellers knocks down the second one. That's a big one. Three point game, 36 seconds left. And we got another barn burner inside Chris and Barry Fieldhouse. I'll tell you what, there might not be any fans here, but you can cut the tension with a knife right now in here. Simpson, left side. Brandon Thomas, that shot is off the mark. Rebound and a whistle, and they'll go down the other end with 18.8 .8 seconds left. And you can hear the Jaguar bench players and coaching staff excited about what can to come. But uh, free throws have been a problem for Augusta in this contest. Yeah, Augusta shooting. Fewer, making fewer than 60% of their free throws, less than 60% of their free throws, 56 to be exact. But you know, it's real fitting that Lee Flanore gets to the foul line and uh, coolly swishes one through. He's been excellent here in the second half. You wouldn't peg him as maybe the most reliable free throw shooter on the team, but you know he hit one to make to, to stretch this lead out to four, and that might be the difference. But we'll see. Yeah, he's got nine of his eleven, Chad, in the second half. Does Flinor, and there's a fight for the loose ball. R Richard Crawford and Timmy Sellers tied up basketball possession arrow in favor of Augusta with a four point lead and 6.3 seconds remaining. If this is indicative of what the Peach Bell Conference will offer this year, we're going to have some great games for you right here on the Peach Bell Conference Network from the Chris and Berry Fieldhouse in Augusta, Georgia. Chad Cook in the Mac Daddy's courtside. Socially distant and enjoying all the action. What a what a pivotal play. You know, I kind of mentioned it earlier when Tyree, I, I said that when Tyree laid out for that loose ball, it's the kind of play that makes a difference between winning and losing. He was able to get that ball and Augusta was able to call timeout and preserve the fact that the arrow was in their favor. Here we are with six seconds to go. Timmy Sellers grabs a rebound, gets tied up. Whose ball is it on the jump ball? Augusta's ball that tracks back to the big play made by Tyree moments ago. And Augusta looks like it might get out of here with a victory. Big inbounds. They go for the home run. Whitehead. And that was knocked out of bounds with 5.9 seconds left by Jordan Thomas. So Whitehead, another wild card reference, acting like a wide receiver on the go pattern, the nine route. As the inbounds, Myers got the ball deflected away, but there's a whistle. And a foul committed.
Didn't catch the culprit on that one, but four fouls nonetheless for the individual. 3.5 seconds left. A chance to ice it. Tyree Myers. As cool as the other side of the pillow. Nine make, made free throws by Tyree Myers in this game will lead to a Jaguar victory as the final shot is off the mark. And congratulations to the 15th ranked Augusta University Jaguars men's basketball program as they improve to 3-0 and while dropping Georgia College to 1-1 one one in conference play. Augusta picking up their first conference win and their first conference appearance Final score this afternoon, 69 to 63. Well, it's good to finally be here with you again today, Charles. Five weeks in the making. Augusta, you know, that long since we played a game. We see Dimitris out there, you know, just, uh, you know, hammering something home with the team. He just gave me the signal wanting to do the interview, so I'm off. People can catch that at uh, augbball.org very soon or on social media. Chad Cook making the frantic race over to catch up with the Jaguar players and coaches Tyree Myers and as he said, Darren Lucas White will be a part of the post-game festivities. You can check those out on augbball. Is Chad excited? He takes his mask off for just a half second to tell the kids how much he enjoyed their activity. And Chad, a proud alum here at the school, and Miguel Arnold also enjoying it, flexing over there, as it was a fantastic afternoon. Augusta and Georgia College showing you, the world, how good basketball can be here in the state of Georgia as both teams put on an outstanding effort in the Peach Belt Conference opener for Augusta. And the, of course, the second contest for uh, Georgia College, who uh, defeated Francis Marion earlier in the week. Looking at some of the key final numbers for you in this one, Augusta shooting 24-52 from the floor. That's 46.2% compared to 20 of 54. For Georgia College, they were 37%. Three-point shooting, Georgia College finished up 7 of 25 for 28%. Augusta shooting 36.4% 36 on 4 of 11 shooting. And Augusta, 17 of 29 from the free throw line. That's something I'm sure Dip Mitris will want to clean up. 58.6%. While uh, Georgia College shooting 16 of 25%. Mark Gaines will want to get that a little higher as well. 64%. Augusta turned the ball over 13 times. Forced Georgia College into three more. Points off of turnovers. Augusta taking care of business with 18 to 12 advantage there. They were out-rebounded in the contest by... The Bobcats, Bobcats with 44, Augusta with 37. The Jaguars had uh, 13 offensive rebounds compared to 18, 24 defensive rebounds compared to 26. As the overall rebounding totals, 44 for Georgia College and 37 for Augusta. And that a large part because of Tyshawn Crawford's absence due to foul difficulty. Augusta University with assists. You looked at the assist numbers. Augusta with uh, more dishes and swishes, 16 assists to 12. Neither team had an official block shot in the game, although I do remember Timmy Sellers and John Whitehead combine, combining for a block. And uh, 10 steals for Augusta. We mentioned Darren Lucas White being a, a major culprit in that, taking care of business compared to four. Bench points. Augusta with only three bench players was outscored 10 to three. That's to be expected. Second chance points. Augusta had the advantage in the first half, but uh, Georgia College taking advantage in the second half. 19 second chance points compared to 13 points in the paint. Augusta 24 to 20. And fast break points, both teams finishing up with four. As far as overall leading scores in this game, Darren Lucas White, a tremendous contest, 25 points, as he now will up that 20-point average that he came into this contest with. 10 of 17 shooting, 3 of 5 from the long range, 2 of 5 from the line, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists for the star of the game, Darren Lucas White. Tyree Myers also contributing with double figures. He had 15 points, 9 of 11 from the free throw line in that effort, along with 8 assists to lead the team. 
Leaf Lenore, solid second half. Nine of his 11 points coming there. He had seven rebounds as well on four of eight shooting. Four of eight shooting for John Whitehead the third, the fabulous freshman. One for four from three-point land. He finished it with nine points and six boards, along with two assists tonight. Tyshawn Crawford had six points, two of six shooting. He had foul difficulty, fouling out of the contest. Six points and four rebounds. You can expect a lot more out of him in the coming days and weeks. Timmy Sellers with three points to complete the scoring for Augusta. Georgia College leading scorer Wesley Simpson and Cole Roberts with 14 points apiece. It was Simpson who had most of his in the second half. Seven of eight shooting from the free throw line helped to fuel that. Roberts, six of 12 shooting for the free throw line. He had eight rebounds as well, did Roberts. Koneman, Christian Koneman coming through with 11 points to complete their double digit scoring. 11 points and five rebounds along with the four of 10 shooting from the field. Jordan Thomas had eight. As for the local prospects, Tucker Gilbert had two. Richard Crawford was 0 for 2 from the floor. He did have an assist in this afternoon's contest. So once again, your final score, Augusta outscoring him in the first half, 37-33, and outscoring him in the second half, 32-30, for the final score of 69-63. Next up for the Augusta men and women, a trip to a Flagler. That coming up on this coming Wednesday, the 13th. And on Saturday, they'll also be on the road at uh, Georgia Southwestern. Make sure you check out the Peach Belt Conference Network for continuing coverage of the Jaguars. 15th ranked in the country, number one in our hearts, as they're victorious this afternoon. Final score, 69-63. So for my broadcast partner, Chad Cook, and for our entire broadcast staff, I'm the Mac Daddy, Charles McNeil, saying good afternoon, and God bless everyone. Take care, and Happy New Year.